Before we start typing commands in our Terraform application, I believe it's crucial to understand the must command commands, how can we use them and what roles they play in Terraform. Therefore, in this lesson, we will take a tour of those commands that could prove useful when you're working with Terraform. We'll start with the help commands. I believe that this command is one of the most informative when starting to work with Terraform. Firstly, we have the command terraform help, which will display the list of commands that we can use during the execution of the Terraform application. In addition, with Terraform, we have the option to type a specific command as we will see next. We also have a command that might be useful at some point, terraform version, which will show us the version of the Terraform we are using. There are some options to initialize the working directories. What do I mean by this? Well, when you are working to execute a plan in Terraform, you must have previously downloaded the provider or the plugin to be able to connect to the cloud provider of your choice. For instance, the Microsoft Azure provider or the AWS one. And we can achieve this thanks to a command called Terraform init. Here, we see that we can initialize the directory by downloading the providers. But if we already have the providers downloaded, we can skip this part with the second command shown here. And we can also initialize the directory without verifying the plugins signed by HashiCorp. Let's remember that we saw something about this on the portal when we examined the different Terraform providers. We could choose some providers verified by Terraform and others not verified, written or maintained by the community. So basically, with this third command, we can work with those providers. We also have get commands that allow us to download and update the modules mentioned in the root module, that is, in the Terraform files. And in case of these modules are already downloaded, we can check for updates of these modules with this command shown here. Furthermore, we have some very important commands for infrastructure provisioning. What does this provisioning mean? Basically, it's about managing resources in the real world creating a resource, modifying it, deleting it, and so on. These are the commands we're going to use. Terraform plan allows us to develop an execution plan, which indicates which resources will be created first, which ones later, if any depend on another, and so on. It's very important and even necessary to create this plan. We can also generate or rather display a destruction plan through this second command. If we are ready with this execution plan, we can implement it through Terraform Apply. This allows us to implement the changes in the real environment. We can also run the Terraform Apply target command to apply the changes only to a specific resource. With this target argument, we can specify which resource we wish to modify in case we only want to change a particular resource and not all resources specified as part of the execution plan. Likewise, we have the command terraform destroy target, which only destroys a target resource and its dependencies, in case we only want to focus on a specific resource. The terraform refresh command synchronizes the state of the terraform state file with the resources of the real world. This is related to one of the components of terraform that I mentioned earlier. Where a state file is maintained, that allows us to constantly compare the status of real-world resources. Well, with the terraform refresh command, we can review this file that we previously created, or that was previously created, and check if it is synchronized with the real-world resources. If it's not, then an update is carried out. Terraform providers allows us to get information from providers using the current configuration. We also have some common commands related to workspaces. You can configure these workspaces as part of your Terraform execution. Suppose you have different environments that you want to test at different stages. For example, a testing environment, a production one, and another environment for any other needs you may have. Well, each of these workspaces can be configured with different variables that point to various resources and thus keep the configuration that varies separate from the actual Terraform files, which specify the creation of the resources, for example. In this way, these files can be kept intact. 
we can have the same file in different workspaces. The only thing that changes is the configuration of how we want to affect those resources or where we want to modify those resources. So, we have, for example, the Terraform Workspace new command to create a new workspace. Terraform Workspace Select allows us to select a previously created workspace. List is used to list existing workspaces. And Show to visualize the name of the current workspace. Finally, the Delete command which, as its name suggests, allows us to delete an empty workspace. We also have some commands related to fermenting and validation. The terraform fmt command allows us to reformat the terraform file according to the canonical HCL standard. In other words, it validates that it is a correct configuration file following the standard set by this rule, the canonical HCL. And finally, terraform validate, which allows us to validate the syntax of the configuration files a very useful feature to easily check if a file is well structured or it is presents any issues. We also have commands for infrastructure inspection. We have a command called terraform graph, which allows us to create a resource graph that lists all the resources of the configuration and their dependencies. This is very useful if we want to know what resources have been created from a certain execution, for example, if additional resources have been generated from a main resource hierarchically. We also have the terraform output command, which allows us to list all the outputs of the root module. In addition, in the terraform output instance public IP command, we can change instance public IP for a specific output. We will delve deeper into this topic of outputs later on. Similarly, we have the terraform output JSON command, which allows us to list all outputs in JSON format, and terraform show to provide a readable output from a state or plan file. You may not yet be familiar with the topic of outputs, but we will review them as we progress through the terraform course. We also have some important commands. In this example that we see on the screen, terraform import aws instance.foodid, what we are indicating is that we want to import an aws instance with the corresponding id, which corresponds to the last part we see here in the resource aws instance and is called foo. We also have some commands that allow us to manipulate the state. If you remember, in a previous class we discussed what the state in terraform is and it is possible to manipulate this state. For instance, we can apply the command terraform state list to list all the resources present in the state file. We can list in a single resource with a given name, specifying the same command, but indicating at the end the resource we want to list. We can move an item in the state file through the command terraform state mv, and also delete items from the state file with terraform state rm. We can extract the current state and send it to standard out through terraform state pool. We can update the remote state from a local state file using terraform state push. And finally, we can display all the attributes of a single resource through terraform state show and the name of the resource we want to examine. Lastly, we have the miscellaneous commands, those that do not fall into a specific category. Like, for example, echo, we have here an operation, terraform cancel, which shows us the expected result of an expression as output, terraform taint, aws instance, and the name of the resource. We can mark a resource managed by terraform as tainted, which will force terraform to destroy and recreate it in the next application. We can remove that state or untaint the marked resource using terraform untaint and the name of the resource. We can also unlock the state of a current configuration with this command we are showing here. And finally, the login and logout operations, which serve to handle the API tokens for the Terraform cloud. So, these are essentially the must command commands in Terraform. We will be using some of them as the course progresses, so you can practice and see how these commands look and function in the real world.